On October 24, 1997, college junior Brett Odom, his girlfriend Mary Wallace, and his cat Jasmine set off for a camping trip in the Smoky Mountains. We had had a very busy week and we had planned a sort of a vacation. We were meeting my parents and some of our church friends at a campsite. We were just really excited. Um, just and we were talking about the whole weekend and you know what I, what I could look forward to and campfires and singing songs. As we got closer, we realized that there was a shorter way to go, and so doing? we took that road because of the map. I was following pretty close behind a white minivan. Brett continued to follow the van's lights along the narrow, twisting road. I turned around to see how the cat was doing in the back seat. When I turned back around, I saw the taillights of a minivan disappear around a curve. But there wasn't time for Brett to make the turn himself, and his truck plunged over the embankment into a creek below. At the same moment, miles away at their campsite, Brett's mother, Janice, was experiencing a bizarre physical reaction. I began to feel this heat sensation, and it was very strange. And when I looked down, my right hand was a sky blue, and I thought, I'm having a heart attack. But as quickly as the sensations began, they disappeared. The experience left Janice with the need to cling to her younger son, as if he might be all that she had left. Her husband, Dr. Alan Odom, sensed that something was wrong. What's the matter? I don't know. I think we better go look for Brett and Mary. Janice had a very uneasy feeling. Uh, in that uh, and she's a very discerning individual and she thought that we ought to go look for Brett since he was late. Janice Odom's premonition could not have been more accurate. Even now, her son's truck lay partially underwater at the bottom of a steep ravine. Mary was still alive, but terrified. As I was panicking and thinking that I was going to die, I heard a voice and I saw a man standing next to me. And he said, you're not going to die right now. Someone needs your help. That is when I suddenly became aware of the fact that Brett was underwater. Once she realized that I was underwater and couldn't do anything, she would pick me back up and, and try and keep my head lifted up on her knees up out of the water so that I could breathe. Oh my god, don't leave me. Miraculously, the driver of the white minivan had seen the accident and immediately flagged down an approaching vehicle driven by an off-duty park ranger. By the time Brett's parents arrived on the scene, the rescue was well underway. There was a lot of activity. We saw the blue lights flashing. I said, well, someone's had a wreck or something. The Odoms soon learned that Mary and Brett had been pulled from the what car happened? and airlifted to a hospital near Knoxville, Tennessee. She said the boy's broken his neck, and the girl has a lot of injuries. The Odoms rushed to meet their son at the hospital. It was a moment that Dr. Odom will never forget. The feelings that I have as a physician were one of concern for the, for the patient that has a broken neck and broken back. The feelings that I have as a parent, as a father, were indescribable. Dr. Odom knew that his son needed a specialist, and so he contacted a friend, Dr. Scott Hodges, at a conference in New York. Brent's been in a terrible accident. I could detect the uh, stress in his voice, and I felt that I really needed to come home and at least be with him. He had a dismal prognosis for being able to ever walk again. The general consensus would have been that he was paralyzed and would remain that way for the rest of his life. Nevertheless, Dr. Hodges agreed to operate. Procedure involved a rather large incision through the chest. We uh, took away all of that bone that was compressing his spinal cord. Next, a bone taken from a cadaver was grafted onto Brett's damaged spinal column to hold it in place. Knowing the surgery might not be a success, the Odoms decided it was time to ask for a miracle. We're trying to get hold of, of some oh, people thanks. and we want to start Thank to you very much. Up. We have had people literally praying for us all over the world. This person would tell that person, that person would tell this person. And um, you'll hear my husband tell you that he felt like it was like a steam locomotive. And the locomotive picked up speed and it just kept going and kept going and kept going and just charged right by us. 
After the long hours of surgery, Janice and Alan finally got to see their son. How you feeling, honey? I felt better. What's the matter? My skin kind of hurts. You can feel her touch you? Uh-huh. Can you feel this? Uh-huh. He had sensation in his hands and his arms and his feet. So there was potential there. The fact that he did have a broken neck and broken back, though, is a very serious, that's a very serious injury. Weeks after recovering from her own injuries, Mary was able to visit Brett. It was a very emotional moment. I was really afraid that he was going to reject me because of the way I looked. He just gave me the biggest grin, and I felt some of the nervousness just kind of melt away. I climbed up on his bed and I laid next to him and it was just, it was really hard to do because neither one of us knew what kind of future he faced. I was afraid that if he was going to be paralyzed, that he was going to be angry at me for saving him when perhaps he would have rather died. At that point in time, there was, there was no thought to anything beyond the present situation. It was a massive effort to make it minute to minute. Over the next two months, Brett worked constantly in physical therapy to try to reclaim some of his motor skills. I went from just being able to flinch muscles at first to actually being able to lift my arm to being able to sit up in a chair. Once we got to that point, my Recovery was moving very, very rapidly, and I was convinced that if there was a miracle to be had, and if it was God's will, I was going to walk out of the hospital. And 63 days later, Brett's miracle became a reality. God showed us very small miracles each day, which added into the one big miracle that Brett was able to walk out of the spinal cord unit. The dramatic events surrounding Brett Odom's near-fatal accident contain all the elements of a miracle. From his mother's premonition that her son had been injured to the strange voice that told his girlfriend she had lived to save his life, the mysteries of that night point to a higher power watching over Brett Odom's life. I think one of the greatest things about this accident, if, if there can be anything great that comes out of it, it is the opportunity to uh, share with other people just um, how great God really is. God has made it very clear to me that bad things do happen to good people, and that doesn't mean that God's an ogre and inflicts pain on people. It means that it's part of His greater plan, and that if we can keep our eyes on Him, we'll stay in His hand, and He will direct our paths.